السلام عليك يا بنت ولي الله السلام عليك يا أخت ولي الله السلام عليك يا عمة ولي الله السلام عليك يا بنت موسى بن جعفر ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم dear viewers and welcome to Imam Hussain TV where today we will be discussing the holy lady Lady Fatima Masuma alayhi salam. As we pay our respects to her, I'd like to extend my condolences to you all on her shahadat. Lady Fatima Masuma was often re referred to as the guardian of Qum. And many narrations and traditions tell us that she had a very close relationship with her brother Imam Ali Raza alayhi salam. And often people draw a comparison between her relationship and the relationship of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to his sister, say the Zainab alayhi salam. But how much do we really know about this holy lady? Do we know enough to um, say that we know enough about her life and why she was so um, special to her brother and why she has such a high position in Islam? Joining me today is Sister Masma. Asalaamu Alaikum, Sister Masma. Alaikum, Asalaamu Alaikum, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Thank you for joining us and inshallah we'll be discussing more about her life and why she had such a high status in Islam. And we know that she has a high position in Islam and often people use her as their intercession with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to have their hajat, to have their amal, to have their duas answered. But do we really know enough about her? And I personally, I can say that hand on heart, I don't know enough about her which draws me very nicely to my first question of today's program. You've been blessed to write a book about her. Um, there must have been some inspiration, something that must have inspired you to write a book on such a noble lady. So just if you'd like to shed some light on why you've written a book on such a, on such a high lady. Sure, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, so we were blessed to um, go to Qum to study there for a year. Mm. Um, my husband and myself and my three children. While we were there, um, I was having a really hard time leaving behind family and um, you know all the comforts of the Western world and, and going to come being on my own at that time. There weren't that many um, sort of people that we knew yeah. there, um, and I was having a really hard time learning Farsi as well. I'm a very much maths and science orientated mm. person. Languages isn't, isn't yeah. my forte at all. Um, I was having a real difficult time and I saw my husband pick it up just like that and my children were, you know, picking it up and I felt really, you know, really silly a little bit sort of yeah. thing. I couldn't, I couldn't grasp the language and I was finding it really, really difficult. And I remember sitting in, in the harem of um, Bibi Masumaykum and actually talking to her and I'm sitting there talking to her but I felt no connection whatsoever. Mm. And I kept thinking, I, wa I wish I was in Mashhad. I wish I was with my imam. And I felt so guilty for thinking, for thinking that. Yeah. And so I went home and, and then we went to Ansarian, the, book you know, the bookstore that everyone goes to in, mm. in Qum. And I tried to find something in English about her and, and I couldn't. There was, at that time, there was nothing in English about mm. her. Um, so I was having a really hard time connecting to her. And then the next time I went to the harem, I, I sat down and I said to her, you know, everyone here talks about, you know, you being the guardian of everyone who's in Qum and you taking yes. care of and loving everyone. Um, I don't feel that love. And mm. it's probably my fault because I don't know anything about you. Like mm. you said, I, you know, there, there was no connection there yeah. at all. And I felt so guilty. And I said to her, you know what, let's, let's make a deal. Yeah. You help me with my Farsi. And I promise you, the first thing I will do is write a book about you in English sure. so that those people who come here who don't know yeah. Farsi, because there was, there's a lot of material about her in, in Farsi, but there's not, there wasn't at that time anything Enough, in English. Yeah. So I said, anyone who's in the same boat as I am, who's coming here, who's not Farsi speaking, will actually be able to know you and connect to you. Mm. So if you help me with Farsi, then that's the first thing I'll do. So Alhamdulillah. I, she, so she, your you know, answers, she, your du'as were answered. Very much so. You know, the, the book is the result of, of this of, amazing yeah. lady's blessings and love that um, she shows Allah. to all those who live in, yeah. in Qum, in, this, in her city. Um, and Alhamdulillah, the book was completed on the wiladat of her father, um, Imam Musa Qazim, and, um, and then printed. I mean, that was 
in 2002, so a long wow. time ago. So I think I need to read that book as well for myself to, to learn more because I can also say that I don't know enough about her and, and she's such a noble lady yes. that we don't give enough respect. We have to learn more about her. And you actually saying that gives me goosebumps because I remember my time in Kum as well and being talking to her and having just left Masha, then you feel like, you know, missing Imam Ali Raza, mm. but you don't know enough about Bibi Masuma, but you know she's got such a high status. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, can you tell us briefly who she is? Okay, um, so very, very briefly, obviously we know that she's the daughter of our seventh Imam, Imam Musa yes. Qasim alayhi salam. She's the sister of Imam um, Ali Raza alayhi salam, our eighth Imam. She is actually, the, uh, they're the only brother and sister of that mother. So they're, okay. they're the only two who share the same, brother, uh, same father and mother. Mm. Um, and there's a 25 years gap between Imam Raza alayhi salam and oh, Lady Fatima Matsuma. Okay. So she was born on the 1st of um, Dhul Qadr in 173 AH okay. in Medina. Mm. Um, she spent six years with her father before he was imprisoned mm. by Harun. And then she had um, about 21 years with her, with her brother, Imam Raza. So she was under the guardianship of two Imams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of learning yes, happening. And then, yes. you know, later on when we talk in depth about her, um, you know, I'll actually explain how yeah. much she took on from, from yeah. them. Um, but in 2000 AH, um, Mamun um, actually forced Imam um, Raza to move to, um, from Medina to Khorasan. Mm. And then she was separated from, uh, from her brother as well. So in the next year, 2001 AH, she decided to go to Khorasan. Okay. But she never made it there. Yes. Um, you know, unfortunately, they, they were um, ambushed in Sawe and um, she fell ill. Yeah. And um, she was taken to Qum, where she spent about 16 to 17 days before passing away. And she's obviously buried in Qum. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Um, so she grew, on, grew up really under, you know, two infallibles. Yes. So she herself has got so much that we can learn from because sure. she's grown up under that guardianship of the seventh imam and of the eighth imam yes. as well. So. And she was very, very close to both her father yes. and her brother. Yes, yes, um, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, Imam Ali Riz, I didn't have any other full um, sister or yeah, brothers yeah. other than... Um, and we know that their bond was so strong that she yes. couldn't live, with, live without her brother. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. So often, I mean, sometimes we refer to her as say the Masma or Bibi Masma and often she's um, referred to or given the name of um, say the Fatima Masma or Lady mm -hmm. Fatima Masma. What is her um, real name? Because people often get confused. Yeah. So she, um, as you know the Imams had um, a very high regard for Lady Fatima mm -hmm. Zahra alayhi salam um, and they would name a lot of their daughters, not just one, but quite a few of their daughters, Fatima. Okay. And um, Imam Qasim al Islam did that. Um, mm. He named four of his daughters Fatima. Okay. So there was Fatima al Kubra, which is Lady Fatima Masuma in Qum. Okay. And then there was yeah. Fatima al Wusta, uh, Fatima al Sugra, and then Fatima al Ukhra. Yeah, okay. So there were four Fatimas yes. in her. But she was the eldest of the four. Um, so that's her name. Her name is Fatima. She was actually given the title Masuma by um, her brother Imam Raza al Islam but after her death, oh, not okay. in her lifetime. In okay. the ziyara that, um, she ha that we have of her mm. is um, by Imam Raza al Islam, and he actually gives her the title of Masuma, which okay. obviously means someone who is sinless, who is an, you know, pure, yes, um, yes. which is a huge deal because the Imams don't say things lightly. Yes. Um, yes so yeah, for him to have given her that title shows at what level she was at. Yeah. Because obviously she's not a Masum. No. But the fact that she's been given the yeah. title of Masum. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's a comparison there between then, say, the Zainab alayhi salam as well, that she, she was not an infallible, yeah. but she had such a high status and she yeah. has such a high status. So I did not know that actually, that her name, um, her title was given after her passing. So that's really interesting yeah. to know actually. So her name is Fatima. Yeah. Are there any comparisons as such between Bibi, Bibi Fatima alayhi salam um, and say Bibi Masuma alayhi salam? They're both their names for Fatima. Yeah. What comparisons can we draw then? So there, there are a few. So for example, when she was six years old, um, she was at home in Medina and uh, a group of men came to Medina to, 
to talk to Imam Qasim al-Islam and, and they had a list of questions with them which they'd written down, which they wanted to ask him on. When they arrived, he wasn't there, so they left the list with, with the family, okay. um, hoping that he would come back and answer them and then they could collect it. Yeah. They stayed in Medina for, for a few days um, and then as they were leaving, they went back to Imam Qasim al-Islam's house to ask if, you know, um, to say their farewells and things yes. and to see if the questions, questions had been answered. Yeah. Um, Imam Qasim al-Islam hadn't returned, but Lady Fatima Masama salam, at the age of six wow. had answered these questions. So they looked at the questions, uh, they looked at the answers and, and um, they were quite happy with them and they, they went on their way. On the way they met Imam Qasim al-Islam returning to Medina and they relayed to him what had happened. He yes. asked to look at the answers. Yes. And um, the, the, the sentence that he said, he said, Fidaha Abuha, which means, uh, may her father be sacrificed for her, which is the exact phrase. I mean, he said this three times, and this is the exact phrase that the Holy Prophet yes. said about Bibi Fatima, uh, yes. Zahra alayhi yes. salam. Um, so again, the fact that, again, Imams don't say things lightly. Yes. And, and, you know, he'd use that phrase for her, shows that, you know, the, the, the status. There is of, a reason. Yeah, for yeah. sure, the status that there was. Yeah. And also, um, there is um, a dream that um, um, uh, someone had. Um, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, um, Sayyid um, Marashi Najafi, mm. if I'm not mistaken. And um, he wanted, he'd, he'd wanted to find out where Lady Fatima Zahra alayhi salam's grave is because mm. we don't know where we she's buried. Know, yeah. So he did uh, an amal, um, you know, um, du'as for 40 nights, mm. um, try, you know, in trying. order to try to yeah. find where her, her um, grave is. And in all of that time, um, he kept, you know, asking, asking to be shown where the, where the grave, the grave is. is. Yeah. And after the 14, 14 nights of the amal, he mm. went to sleep and he had a dream. And in this dream, he is told um, that he he's told to go to um, and and the, the title that was given was um, uh, the um, Karamatul um, sorry the the noble woman mm. yeah uh, Karamatul Ahlul Bayt yeah yeah the, the the noble one of the family of the Prophet. Now he is told to go. Um, it was either the fifth or the sixth imam. He, he says he was standing at Baki. He doesn't know whether it was the fifth or the sixth imam, but mm. he's told by them to go to, uh, to visit um, the grave of Karamatul Ahlul Bayt. Mm. He assumes this means Bibi Fatima to Zahra mm. alayhi salam, and he says, that's what I'm trying to do. Yes. Um, that's why I've been doing you know, these amals and these duas. And, and, he's in, and the imam says to him, I meant the holy grave of Lady Fatima to Masama, Masama. in yeah. Qum. And then the Imam actually added, it is Allah's desire that the location of the holy grave of Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam be hidden from everyone. Mm. Here Imam has actually placed the, the grave of Lady Fatima to Masuma alayhi salam in place of the grave of Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Okay. So although this person was looking for the grave of yes. Lady Fatima to Zahra yeah. alayhi salam, Imam tells her to go and visit Lady Fatima, Fatima Masuma, Masuma, which is quite powerful again. Which is very powerful. So yeah. his his hajat got accepted. Um, and it's really, you know, it's amazing because often when we go to Qum, we don't realize her status and we don't yeah. realize that actually, you know, if we long to see Bibi Fatima alayhi salam's grave and we know that we, we don't know her whereabouts, yeah. we can actually, and I think in some traditions it says that we can gain the same thawab. Yes. So again, so, we have lots of <coughs> hadiths which talk about the the, the um, benefits of going to her pilgrimage. Yes. And one of them is uh, where Imam Radal actually, alayhi salam, actually says, um, whoever visits my sister, it's as if yes. he has visited me. So wow. again, having the same sawab of going to, to an imam's, to imams you know, yes. haram and, and yes. going to be Lady Fatima to Masama, yeah. alayhi salam's uh, haram. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So she has, you know, she's been given these amazing titles mm. by the Aima. So again, Masama was given to her by her brother. Um, in this dream, um, you know, this Qara uh, Mithul Ahlul Bayt was given to her by either the fifth or the sixth Imam. Yeah. So, they, you know, they're, they're amazing titles. And again, like you said, you compared her to Bibi Zainab alayhi yes. um, because again, she's not one of the 14 Masameen, no. but she's been given this title. Yeah. I think it's important to recognize what um, infallibility means, this concept of sinlessness, because yes. we feel like it means that they can't sin. Yes. Um, so they, they are able to sin, okay. 
but they've chosen not, not to. to. To them, it's so disgusting that they mm. would never do something like that. And because they, out of free will and free choice, don't sin, yes. God then has purified them a thorough purification. Okay. So now they don't, they're not, um, he's, they're, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them from sinning by forgetting or okay. by um, accident, sort of thing, by, by not knowing. Mm. Um, yeah. So Lady Fatima, um, Masuma, Lady Zainab, mm. um, Hazrat Abbas, yes. um, have all been, have all chosen not to sin. Okay. So they have the ability to yes, sin. Yes, but they don't. But so they, because they have that knowledge yes. as well, they can exactly. see how how that sin, what, what that sin would take yeah. them to. The effect it would the, have on their soul. Exactly. Yeah. They choose not to. And then you're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them um, that greater knowledge and insight, so he takes them away from that sin then later on as so well. So Masum is someone who's been given that thorough purification, which okay. obviously we have for the 14 Masumi. Mm. So Lady Fatima Masuma, Lady Zainab, Hazrat Abbas, are not Masum in that sense, that yes. they are protected from sin by God, okay. but they are Masum in the sense that they do not commit sins out of their own free will and free choice. Okay. Obviously, if we do something by accident, Yes. We can't be blamed for that. Yes. But because, um, you know, the, the 14 Masumina are at such a high level that even God has even protected them from doing anything by accident yes. as well. Yes. So, yes, they are. Ma these, um, you know, Lady Fatima Masuma, Lady Zainab, alayhi salam, uh, Hazrat Abbas, alayhi salam, mm. are all Masum to the extent that they do not commit sins um, out of out their of own their choice, choice or yeah. out of, you know, they may, may make a mistake. Yes. Um, because they're not infallible Fallible, as such, yes. but they're Muslim from the perspective of that they don't commit sins. So, so they've they must done the work themselves to get that. Yeah, and they yeah. must have such a high knowledge to know the yeah. difference, you know, and how, what the sin would take them to potentially. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, but the beautiful thing is, is um, um, this um, Sayyid Marashi Najafi, who, who had this dream, mm. uh, when he woke up from his dream, the first thing he did was obviously go to um, come to pay you know, his um, uh, pilgrimage to do his ziyara to uh, Lady Fatima Masuma. Yes. But later on, his son, um, the Grand Ayatollah uh, Sayyid Shabab al-Din um, Marashi Najafi, actually migrated to Qum. And he said one of the reasons that he migrated to Qum was because of the stream of his father. And there he set up a library. And now and, and when you go to Qum, you know, he's, he's buried in his own library there um, mm. in Qum. Mm. And he was for, you know, all the time that he lived there, which was over 60 years, he would every single morning be the first one waiting outside the harem for it to open so that he could go and say his salams yes. to Lady Fatima Masuma. Yeah. Even um, in his final illness before his death, he mm. requested to be taken there, you know, every morning. So okay. for over 60 years, I mean, this is this is the impact that she has she on you, has. that love and that yeah. connection that yeah. she builds to you. Yeah. It's, you know, once, you, once you've made that connection, it, it's, it's, it's never, beautiful. It's beautiful. Exactly. exactly. And that's why we, you know, we feel such a sense of peace when you're there. Yeah. And even if you don't, don't know enough yeah. about her, you feel peace. And when you leave, and yeah. actually it's very strange because when I took my son there, he was very young at that time. But from all the ziyarats, he liked Qum the most. And I, he couldn't explain and I didn't understand it at the time. But now we're talking about it more and more. I'm understanding it more because of the level that she has. Um, it's truly amazing, actually. Yeah, it's no, truly, amazing. truly amazing. And I think the greatest lesson for me is, you know, when that she was a non-Muslim. Yes. She wasn't an imam. Yes. You know, she wasn't, you know, at that stage. Yeah. But yet she managed to get herself to such a high to level. Highest to status, So yeah. what's my excuse? <laughs> yeah. What's my excuse? You've <laughs> written a book. What have I done? Um, so why did she, we've heard in narrations, that she didn't marry. Mm -hmm. um, why? Why was that reason? Um, well, we know that it's it wasn't out of choice. She mm. didn't choose to abandon the the, the you know getting married. Yes. Um, because we have a hadith which talk about how important marriage is. Exactly. Yeah, yes. So we have a hadith from the Holy Prophet, um, sallallahu alaihi mm. wa where he says that there's no institution more honourable yeah. in and, and beloved to God mm. um, than marriage. Yeah. And he also talks about the fact that marriage is part of his sunnah, his sunnah. and whoever you know, yeah. disregards his sunnah is not from him. Yeah. So we know that's not the reason she didn't marry. And also, that I think um, at the time of the fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad Bakr, mm -hmm. there was actually a woman who chose not to marry. Um, and she said because she wanted to 
um, get honor in, in Allah's eyes and, and okay. concentrate on mm -hmm. getting um, closer to Allah. And she felt that marriage would deter her from that. Oh, and, okay. and again, if you look at other religions, that's yes. the thinking. You know? Yeah, I was going and to say. And a lot of the times, even if we don't understand Islam, we do think that, you know, um, our husband, our spouses, our, our children stop us from getting close to God because yeah. we're not able to do as much about yeah. that. I mean, yeah. if you think back to when you had your, when your kids were younger, yeah. Yeah. you know, you don't have time to do you the extra ibadah, yeah. you know, all the Muslim But that is thing. probably, that's a higher ibadah exactly. in, the, in the eyes of Allah exactly. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And often we don't, and especially, you're right, as mothers and you have young children, you don't see that until yeah. later on. Exactly. And I think that that's, that's the beauty of Islam, where it's not about sitting on the, you know, on the musalla mm. and, and just doing specific wrote you know just recitation yes. it's, it's about actually living islam yes and you know every aspect of our lives should be in obedience to god and if yeah. it is in obedience to god and yeah. and if it is for his pleasure then it becomes about that exactly. so whether i'm with my spouse whether i'm with my children whether yeah. i'm you know doing a tv show whether i'm just you know having a cup of tea yes. all of it can be about yes. that yes. It's, it's having that correct yes. near yeah. Um, and, and I think that's even really making a cup of tea for your husband <laughs> could be sure. as well. For sure, it depends on how you make yeah. it. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, with the right near, everything exactly. can be. Yeah. So we know that she didn't abandon um, marriage because mm. we know that at, at that time, because when this woman wanted, you know, chose not to get married, mm. Imam Muhammad Bakr al Islam actually says to her that if the abandonment of marriage gave a person more honor, then Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam yes. would not have married. Yes. Um, for there is no woman who's purer yeah. or more honorable yeah. than her. Yeah. So um, there may be, you know, the, the, the reason may be that there wasn't anyone at the same standard as mm. her. Um, mm. And again, you know, anyone who's compatible at that time. Yes. Because again, we have that, um, you know, we have a hadith from Imam Sadiq al Islam where if um, God had not created Amir al Mu'minin, Imam yeah. Ali salam, for Fatima, then there would not have been a suitable Somebody, um, yeah. husband yeah. for her yeah. in the whole world. Um, so Very true. there may have not been someone who was suitable, okay. or it may be the fact that at that time there was so much fear and anxiety caused by Harun's government mm. that people wouldn't have wanted to get close to Imam and his family. So any oh. suitors would not have come forward because okay. they wouldn't have been wanted to at be aligned. Fear. Yes, exactly. They wouldn't have been wanted to be aligned with, yeah. with Imam yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, so it could have been because of that as well. Okay. So it's interesting because um, that question does arise and, and often, you know, you do think, oh, why doesn't, but it makes sense now. Yeah. And I think that the, the most powerful thing here is, um, you, sh you know, these titles are just um, for worldly purposes. Yes. It's the journey that's what's important, the yes, journey towards 100%. God. And if you get yeah. caught up in the titles, then you, you forget the, the, the journey towards God. Yeah. So it's like if I'm not getting married, that doesn't make me any less. No. If I don't no. have children, that doesn't make me yeah. any less. But often, you know, community makes you yeah. feel that way. I think and not only community, but ourselves yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we grow up and we have this image of this amazing perfect life where, life, yeah. you know, this perfect life where I'm going to study, I'm going to qualify, and then yeah. I'm going to get married, and then yeah. I'm going to have my 2.5 children, yeah. and then I'm yeah. going to, you know, yeah. and have my grandchildren, and I'm going to... Yeah. But that's not what life is. And, yeah, and, and true. life is about, it literally, if... if I am moving towards God, mm. then I'm succeeding in my life. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether I'm married or whether I have kids or whether yeah. I don't. Or that how many matter. kids you have. Exactly. Often people say you have one, you have three, you have, why don't you have more kids? Exactly. And it's the same sort of thing. It's like, well, you know, how much money do you have? How many cars yeah. do you have? It's the same sort of thing. These are all um, tools in order to allow us to get closer to God. Mm. And Allah chooses what tools we require to get close to Him. Yeah, Sometimes true. He'll give us something because it will bring us closer to Him. Yeah. Sometimes we beg for something and He knows out of His wisdom that this is not good for us. It's going to yeah. take us away from Him. So He withholds it. Or sometimes he's got a he's got a bigger plan for us. Yes, so with Lady Fatima yes. Masuma, imagine if she had got married, mm. maybe she wouldn't have been able to travel to, um, you know, to meet her her brother, and she mm. wouldn't have mm. then got mm. ill and and, and yes. you know passed away in Kum, and we wouldn't have had her in, yes. in Kum, yes. and and you know the, being the guardian of Kum and taking care of all those people, she wouldn't have been able to do she that role. Have been, yeah. So you know, God actually had something greater for God, her yeah. than than the concept of marriage and. But then again, marriage is a huge thing as well. So it's like, I don't think there's any right or wrong as long yeah. as you're doing 
um, you know, you're, you're doing it with the right near. So if you're trying to get married, mm. um, because that's just another profit, yes. and then you don't get married, then I think, you know, we need to sort of say, okay, you know what, maybe this isn't what God's got in plan for me. Yeah. Maybe he's got something else in plan. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you don't have to continue doing the duas. You should still pray for what you want yes. uh, because it's innate in us to want yes. to get married. So yeah. I think we should pray for that, but at the same time not lose hope, not feel like uh, I'm less than mm. because I haven't got a husband or because I don't have a wife or because I don't have children. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. th those things are just for this world. Yeah. And sometimes those things actually pull us away from God. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because often, you know, sometimes we end up comparing ourselves to other people yeah. and, and you never find true happiness because you're always looking at the other person. Yeah. The other person has this and I don't have that. And it's all about striving and that journey to Allah subhanahu exactly. wa ta'ala. And we have, um, you know, Lady Masma is a perfect example. Yeah. She she wasn't married, but she had such a high status. and. Yeah. It's a, it's a testament to her and it just it's a perfect example to so many other people yeah, that for sure. we can we'll never get to her status but we can try and better ourselves to become the best version of ourselves. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's I, and I think we forget the the, the purpose of, of our life and we forget yes. that it's the aim of our life and yes. the goal is God. Yes. Even in our duas, it's like sometimes when you want something a lot, you know, mm. it's like we'll, we'll pray to Allah and we'll say for example, Ya Allah please give me kids. Ya Allah please give me kids. Yeah. But what I've done is I've cut my dua. I've made yeah. my end kids, yes. whereas I should say, Ya Allah, please give me kids in order to, br to bring yes. me closer to yes. you, yes. in yes. order that they become the Ansar of the Mahdi. Yes. Until Allah exactly. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's again, Ya Allah, please let me get married. Ya Allah, please let me get married. Again, it should be, Ya Allah, let me get married so that together we can mm. get closer to mm. you. Or Ya Allah, let me pass these exams. Again, let me pass these exams so that I can actually then, you know, um, do something with that yeah. for you. So, you know, exactly. we should always make sure that our du'as aren't cut. A lot of the times we cut our du'as yeah. and then psychologically what we've done is we've made that thing our end goal. Yes. And, you know, even if we don't mean to, it, it, it. It's, in, yeah. it's in the back of our and heads. that's very normal. We yeah. all do that. But what you're saying is we should always have Allah as our front goal. Yeah. So whatever we wish for, whatever yeah. we pray it should for, lead us to that. leading us to Allah yeah. and, and, and for actually his voicing pleasure. that. And actually yeah. voicing that. So it's a reminder to us yeah. that I want this thing, but only if it's going to bring me to you. Okay, yeah. Because often we have it inside of us, yeah. but we're so busy in our lives. We think, okay, Allah knows what I, what's in my heart. But actually saying yeah. it, probably has a, a greater effect for sure because it one it, it sort of reminds us because mm. I think a lot of the times when we focus on something that we really really want and like you know and it's something that's innate in us as well like getting married or having kids and things like yeah. that then that becomes my all um, yes. without me even realizing so this yeah. way I never make anything my all it's always it's always Allah it's always Allah okay. sort of thing so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful reminder for myself mm. and also I think you know that's the way we've been taught to, to do yes. our duas as well yes, yes. Um, you know so making sure that everything goes back to Allah it's mm. like we know these things but, but it, we need reminders we need, we need reminders and that's why the, the Holy Quran is full of reminders right Exactly. And so we can only like, for example, for me, I can only try and do better by my children so that they hopefully, you know, they will one day please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serve in the army of Imam, like you're Inshallah. saying. Inshallah. 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 So did Lady Fatima Masuma, we know her status now and we know that she was very knowledgeable. Did she narrate any hadith? Yeah, um, alhamdulillah, we, we have um, a, quite a few narrations from her. And again, it, it's beautiful because it shows that it's not just the men of the mm. household that were yes. you know, doing the work yeah. sort of thing. Um, the, the problem is because of the oppressive regime at that time, mm. um, there, you know, we've lost a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but we do, have, we do have quite a few. So we have, for example, the, tradition, the, the hadith of Qadir. Okay. Um, which she relates um, from uh, Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. So, you know, the, the narration, the, it's a chain of narration that goes back to Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, um, who says that, you know, who actually says, have you forgotten the words of the Prophet of God on the day of Qadir Akum, when mm -hmm. he said, whosoever's leader I am, then Ali is also their leader. So okay. the, the chain leads from Lady Fatima to Zahra all the way down to Lady, Fat uh, Lady Fatima to Masuma. Masuma. Um, right. without a break in between. So it shows us just wow. an authentic hadith. Yes. Um, again, the hadith of um, uh, where the Holy Prophet um, likens Imam Ali alayhi salam um, to um, him, him and Imam Ali alayhi salam to Harun and Musa. Okay. 
Mm. So that is why he says, um, your relationship to me is like the relationship of Harun to Musa, but there is no prophet after me. Yes. Um, again, was related by um, Lady Fatima Masuma. Okay. We have a hadith which talks about when the Holy Prophet went to Maraj and what he saw and on the doors where it's in, you know, where there was inscribed La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Ali and Waliullah, and you know, and, and all and, and all the different things that were um, ascribed on on the doors where mm-hmm. when he travelled in up in that into the heavens and things. So we we do have quite a few hadiths from uh, Lady Fatima Masuma, which which are beautiful. Um, again, I suppose the learning is that a lot of the times. As the woman, I sort of sit there and think, okay, you know, we leave it to the men, we leave it to the mm-hmm. men. And, and this shows that we have a duty as well, oh, um, for sure. especially when it comes to knowledge. I think, you know, yeah. a lot of the times we get so busy bringing up our children. But if we're mm-hmm. bringing up our children, we need to make sure that they have knowledge. So they're going to be learning from me as the mother first. Yes. And if I don't definitely. know, they're not going to know. They're not going to learn. And yeah. they're going to be boys and girls as well. So it's important yeah. that I teach yeah. them. What I know, because that's you know, it's, it's like Ayatollah Khomeini used to say that you know, in the laps of the mothers, is is you know, other yeah, soldiers sort yeah. of thing. So it's, it's again understanding this concept of, um, I am the first teacher of my children. Yes, that that's and really that's, really important. And, and, and Lady Fatima Masma actually showed that again, yeah. you know, at the age of six, being able to answer yeah, those questions, yeah. relating hadiths and and so forth. Um, yeah. So. And we forget that often as young mothers that we are. Children look up to us first. Yeah. So, wow, that's beautiful, yeah. actually. So, you mentioned in the beginning that, um, you know, and, and we, we talk about that she's the guardian of Qum. How did she, how did she end up in Qum? Okay, so, um, as I said, her, her brother, uh, Imam Raza al mm. in 200 AH was forced by Mamun, uh, by Mamun to actually move to Khorasan. Okay. She was very, very close to her brother. But again, you know, a lot of the times we don't understand what this idea of closeness means. Mm. We look at it very much as an emotional attachment, which is a human attachment. But these um, holy personalities were, yes, they were human and they had the emotional attachment, but it was mm. always with God in mind, yes. with God as the focus. Yes. So although we know she missed her, her brother, it wasn't just, oh, poor me, I haven't got my brother anymore, or I miss him so much. What we would do. Exactly. But it was more like, I'm missing my imam. It's the same sort of principle, I I think, when we we hear that, you know, when when the Holy Prophet passed away, Lady Fatima Zahra, alayhi salam, cried continuously. Mm. She cried, you know, so much that the, the people of Medina started complaining to Imam Ali yeah. Islam and said, you know, make her tell her to either cry in the day or the night. Yeah, Don't, you know, yeah, she's just crying yeah. continuously, and it makes her look like she's such a weak person yeah. and she's missing her father so yeah. much that all she's doing is just she's crying. crying. Yeah. But there was a whole revolution that happened because of her mourning. It wasn't mm. so much crying; it was mourning. The fact that this this woman who was known by the ladies of Medina, yes. um, they knew her, her status, they knew her her strength and her sabr, yes. and the fact that she was mourning so much made them question why. Why, yes. why are you mourning so much? And yes. she was able to then explain to them what their husbands were doing. Oh. So there was a whole revolution that was happening from this mourning. Wow. Also, the fact that she was mourning the death of the greatest human being yes. that had ever been created had been taken from from, from the earth. earth so the Mercy blessings had gone. exactly the wow. blessings that were on the earth had gone and she could see that she could see the reality of that and they had so much love for the people yeah that you know they actually felt the hurt yeah. that we were feeling no matter how much right. we do against them it's like we we're constant you know we we're told that our deeds are, are given to to the imam of our time yes yes but we don't care that we're making him cry through our yeah. deeds. And yet he still prays for us. You know, they love yeah. us so much. We don't deserve that love, but they really, really love us. Yeah. And, and we make him cry, but he prays for us. In the same way, you know, Lady Fatima to Zahra Islam was crying for the people because they'd lost out on this mercy. And, See, and, I did not know that. We we knew that we know about the close bond between Bibi Fatima and Prophet Muhammad. But you're saying that, so that's something new that I've learned. I didn't realize that she was crying so much because she knew what that mercy to mankind yeah. had been lifted. Why well, he would never now come down yes, on the earth. Yes. That's huge. And yeah. then also the, 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 the revolution that was happening through her mourning. You know, there's, there's yes. so much happening. So again, with, with uh, Lady Fatima Masuma, she wasn't just crying 
because she was separated from her brother. Mm. She was crying because she was separated from the imam of her time. That's huge. huge yeah. And she, you know, she wanted to go back to, with him. And, and it wasn't just getting, you know, going there just to be with her, with her brother or her mm. imam. It was to actually play a role in, in pro, you know, um, propagating. propagating Islam. Yeah. Yeah. So she, you know, she wanted to make sure that she played the role that she needed mm. to. So she decided a year later in 201 AH to actually travel to Khorasan. Um, to be with her brother, to be with the imam, so that if he needed anything, especially teaching the women, and we know how, you know, it's, it's much easier for a woman to teach a woman than yes. a man to teach a yeah. <laughs> to teach yeah. women. Yeah. So again, you know, she wanted to be there to ensure that she, she played her role yeah. in, in that. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, she, did, she didn't make it. Um, we're told that um, on the way the caravan was um, uh, ambushed mm. um, by the soldiers of Mamun, and um, they... Here she actually saw um, her family members being brutally killed. Mm. So we're, we're given um, the numbers like about 23 of her family members were killed in front of her. Wow. So again, this is the comparison that you made at the beginning. Bibi um, Zainab. Yeah, Bibi yes. Zainab yes. who saw her family yes. members being brutally killed in front yeah. of her as well. So it wasn't just the close bond between Imam Hussein and Bibi Zainab, but the fact that Bibi Zainab saw... The family members in front yeah. of her eyes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And, and so, you know, Lady Fatima Masama also saw that as well. And we're told that it was, before the ambush happened, what, what happened is the soldiers came and in order to try to stop them from going, they didn't want them to get to Khorasan, to the mm. Imam. So they started um, spreading this rumor okay. that um, the Imam has died. Oh. Now, this caused a lot of confusion yes. because some people believed them, some people didn't. They didn't yeah. know what to do. So some people were in, within the caravan of, of Lady Fatima Masama were saying, well, there's no point going to Khorasan now, let's go back Please, to Medina. Yeah. And then some were saying, no, but we don't know whether they're telling the truth, mm -hmm. or maybe we should. And there's all this confusion. And yeah. while this confusion was happening, they seized the opportunity and, you know, uh, ambushed the, the caravan and, and mm. killed uh, 23 members of, of the family. Yeah. This is why um, you may sometimes hear that Lady Fatima Masuma died um, after hearing the death of her brother. Yeah. But she didn't. She died before her brother because that was a lie. Oh. He wasn't dead. It was just a rumor. So the imam so was... there's a lot of confusion there exactly. in history as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, before I started doing the research, um, I'd grown up hearing in Majalis that she had died because she heard yes. the death of her, you yeah. know... Yeah, uh, out of sadness yeah, exactly. and grief, yeah. But we have... that The, the ziara that we have is from her brother. So how he, could he have given the ziara to and us? And he gave her the title after of Masuma. she passed exactly. away. Wow. Exactly. So um, we know that, you know, she, 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 um, she became very ill. Now, it, this could be because of everything that she was put through. Yes, um, yes. There's another narration that says that um, she was actually given some poison okay. um, and that made her ill. Mm. Um, but in, Sa in Sawe, the, the people of Sawe were very much against the Ahlul Bayt. Okay. Um, so it was a very hostile environment. So we're told that when she became ill, um, they decided to take her to Qum. And there's another narration set that says that no, um, there was, uh, Qum was very much a Shia uh, place, uh, mm. you know, lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, mm. and um, there was um, someone, uh, you know, the fam the people from Qum came and um, invited her to Qum, okay, and actually sort of okay. took her on on um, on the camel back and, yeah. and took her to to Qum, where she then stayed, uh, you know, there, and then she was there for about sixteen to seventeen days before mm. she passed away. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's how she ended up in Qum. She never oh, actually got to see her to brother. Her brother, okay. Yeah. So she, you know, she had a close relationship with her brother, but also she knew that he was the imam of her time. And that draws another comparison to Bibi Zainab, why she was so valiant in Karbala, because she knew, yes, Imam Hussein is her brother, but he's actually the imam. Yes, exactly. So there's quite a few exactly. comparisons that can be drawn there, actually. And again, we, yeah, and we have this thing that, you know, what Bibi Zainab, um, you know, um, couldn't live without Imam Hussein yes. and she wanted to, you know, um, in her marriage, you know, the, she wanted to, yes, to have that exactly. statement put in. And, yes. But again, it's because it's not, it's not that, there is obviously an emotional attachment between yeah, a brother and course. sister. Yes. But it was more than that. It was, she knew she had a role to yeah. play. Yeah. It, you yeah. know, after, after, after Karbala, there was a huge role that she had to play. Yeah. Yeah. So she had to be there. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, you know, understanding history makes us understand um, the, the strength that these they people have. had yeah. and actually yeah. then try to emulate it to a certain extent in our lives. I think, you know, yes. we, we, we talk about 
Cons you know, we talk about concepts, but I don't think we actually truly understand them until we see them played out by, by these holy mm, personalities mm, because mm. they play, play them out, you know, so beautifully that it makes you sort of think, what am I doing? It's yeah. like, you know, I honestly, when you see the sabr and the strength the that, patience, you know, the, and that they have and you think, So wow. we have no excuse really, really in our lives to even say, why Allah, why me? You know, when right, you've got perfect well. examples of... Bibi Fatima Masuma, Bibi Zainab in yeah. front of us, we don't have an excuse at all. Not at all, not at all. So, you know, that draws me very um, nicely to the next question where Ayame Masuma, the days of Masuma, mm -hmm. why do we have them? So, um, there's a little bit of confusion on um, when she actually passed away. Mm. So, there are three dates that are given. Okay. Um, there's the 10th of Rab uh, Rabathani, mm. there's the 12th of Rabathani, and there's the 8th of Shaban. Okay. Um, now, because the 10th and the 12th are very close to each other, there's three days, obviously, 10th, 11th and 12th, yes, yes. Um, the scholars have said, okay, let's take these two dates and make those three days as Ayame Masume. Okay. Um, and, you know, and, and then we'll sort of commemorate her um, mm. during the, these three days. Yeah. So that, that's how we get Ayame Masume for the okay, three days. Okay, and why not? She's such a noble lady. Exactly. Why not? Exactly. Yeah. So... What was so special about her burial? Um, so we know that, um, you know, when she um, passed away, she was in the house of a man called uh, Musa ibn Khazraj, mm -hmm. ibn Saad Ashari. And um, he, he was the one who had actually gone to Sawe to, according to some narrations, and, and bring her back, and he, and he kept her in his house. Um, and um, they arranged for Ghusl and Kafan to be done. After the ghusl and coffin had been done, they were discussing amongst them who would go down into the crypt to actually lower her body into the crypt. Mm. And as they were having this discussion, two masked men, riders, came, mm. appeared, and um, they sort of took charge. Okay. They dismounted from, uh, you know, they, they, they came down from their mounts and, and they took the, the, the body of Lady Fatima Masuma and they actually recited the Salat al for her okay. and then they took her and, and buried her in, in, and they put her into the yeah. crypt and then they, yeah. without talking to anyone, um, rode off again. Now, obviously no one's certain who, those, could, the, who they be. were, yeah. but it's believed that they were the, um, her brother Imam Radha alayhi salam, and his son Imam Ali, um, Muhammad al Taqi alayhi salam. Um, so Imam Radha had come from Khorasan yes. and Imam Muhammad al Taqi from Medina in order to participate, participate in, her, in burial. her burial. Again, showing the status of this woman. Exactly. Um, the fact that two imams, imams. had come yeah. to, you know, to, to give her that honour. And, and yeah. yes, the imams would give honour to you know, any um, um, pious people yes. and bury them. But the fact that they'd actually, you know, both of them had come, one of them could have come. Yeah, you know, it could have just, just been because, like, okay, in, in, you know, Imam Raza was in Khorasan, yeah. he was her brother, he could have come, but the fact that his son also came yeah. just shows what an amazing What an woman amazing, she was. and, yeah. and you, the more you speak about her, the more goosebumps I get, and the yeah. more I want to learn about her, you know. And, and we could sit here all day and speak about her, but I'm, I'm keen to finish these questions just so that our viewers can learn a little bit more about her. Oh, so, so, if we move on to the next question, can you mention some of the um, merits of? say, the Masuma's pilgrimage. Sure, and again, like you're saying, you know, I think those goosebumps where you want to go to, to yes. visit her, it's, they're going to increase so much more yes. now <laughs> when you hear these merits, because, I mean, we have merits from three imams about her, you know, so you have, for example, Imam Sadiq al -Islam, and this is before she was even born. In fact, this was even before uh, Imam, um, her father, Imam um, Musa Qazim al -Islam, was born. Okay. So Imam Jafar Sadiq al -Islam, is talking about Bibi Masuma, mm. Lady Fatima Masuma, before... Um, his, her father is even born, wow. okay? And he says that there, a lady from my children by the name of Fatima will be buried in Qum. Whoever visits her shrine will certainly be admitted to heaven. Yeah. Um, and again, this, this concept of being admitted to heaven is, is by Imam Radha as well, who says whoever visits her shrine, will, uh, his reward will be heaven. Mm. Um, and we also have from uh, Imam uh, Muhammad al-Taqi, Jawad al-Islam, where he says, whoever visits my aunt, Lady Fatima Masuma al-Islam in Qum, will enter heaven. So three Aima have said that by going to visit her, to, to do her ziyara, yeah. you're entitled to heaven. Again, obviously, 
there are conditions. We can't, you know, it's not just yeah. doing it yeah. like a tick box exercise. Yeah. You have to understand her status. You have yeah. to understand who you're going to see and, and give her the, you know, the, the respect that she yeah. deserves. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and there's another beautiful hadith from Imam Sadiq al-Islam where he says, a lady from my children whose name will be Fatima, daughter mm. of Musa, will die in Qum. On the day of judgment, this lady will intercede for all my Shia to enter heaven. If only we knew her, the true merits and the true status of this noble life. And I speak for myself, if only I knew her merits when I was with in the coma, I would really try and connect with her more. Uh, uh, no, for so sure. It's, it, it, and, you know, and the thing is, we have, we have many a hadith which talk about the fact that um, you know, non-Muslims can intercede for people. Yes. But there's not anyone that's been named. So here, mm -hmm. Imam actually it's names her, her and says that yeah. she will. And this is probably why in the ziara written uh, for her by her brother, you know, by her mm, brother, he mm. actually says, um, you know, he, he uses the, the concept of, you know, um, asking for that intercession. Okay. So there's a part of the ziara where you say, oh, Fatima, intercede for me yes. um, so that I may enter heaven. And again, that's because of the hadith that says that, you know, she can intercede for, our, for us. Yeah. So that, that's really, really powerful. Um, so her ziara is very special then? Yes, because it was, again, we don't have a non-masum who has a ziarat written specifically for them oh, by yeah. a masum. So okay. the fact that Imam Raza salam, wrote a ziarat specifically for her, for her wow. is, is, is beautiful. Um, and, and he also, and again, showing what a high level she's at. He says, whoever visits masuma, this is Imam Raza salam, he says, whoever visits masuma in Qum, it is like he has visited me. Wow. And we also have... Following that, that you know, we have that whoever visits um, any of the imams, um, you know, Imam Sadiq al Islam was asked, um, What is the reward of someone who you know performs mm -hmm. pilgrimage of one of the imams? And he says, It's as if he has visited the Prophet. So, if you combine the two hadith together yeah. by visiting Lady Fatima Masuma, you're getting the hadith, uh, you're getting the reward of visiting Imam, Imam Raza. By visiting Imam Raza, you're getting the reward of visiting wow. the Holy Prophet. So, so, you know, it's like you can't you draw that back, you can't. You <laughs> It's amazing. It's, she's so high. Yeah. She, I mean, no, for sure. You, yeah, wow. And, and we have also that, you know, um, there was a Shia who actually narrates that he went to uh, the pilgrimage of Imam Raza al Islam mm. and then he went on to um, Karbala from okay. there. And in his um, dream, he, had Imam, he saw Imam Raza where Imam Raza said to him, You came to do my ziara. Why didn't you go to, do my to my sisters in Qum? Okay. So yeah. even though he went to Karbala, he didn't go back home. But Imam actually still said to him, you should have still gone, you know, you should have, should gone. have visited my sister. Yeah, to my sister. So yeah. there are so many hadiths, so many hadiths that talk about, you know, the, the importance of her ziara. And yeah. it's, you know. And I guess we could be here all day yeah. sitting and talking about her. And I, I feel like I really need to read that book of yours now <laughs> to learn more about her and try and better myself as well, inshallah. inshallah. And, and that, you know, very nicely brings me on to the last question of today's program and have there been any miracles we know and, and you, you've told us that she's such a noble lady and she has this high status have there been any miracles that have occurred in her name and at her shrine and at her ziarat yeah um loads so they they actually have an office there in Qum um okay. this is when I was living there I'm yeah. sure it's it, yeah. you know it's, it's different now but they used to have an office where when, whenever a miracle happened, you would go and um, actually lodge it down. So, you know, so it would be oh, written down and okay. it would be kept, you know, so that um, there was a, a whole list of miracles that were happening. And there is no other shrine other than Lady Zainab al-Islam and Hazrat Abbas al-Islam where, you know, who are non-Muslim, where so many miracles are happening. Really? So literally the, the, the number of miracles that happen in Qum um, is, is, you know, it, in tally with the number of Some miracles part. that are happening in, Bibi's, mm. you know, in Sham and Bibi Zainab al Islams or in, in Karbala and, at Hazrat Abbas al yeah. Islams. Um, and, and you know, you could sit here for hours and hours and talking about it, but the, the, I think the ones that I wrote in my book, which were, um, you know, of certain people who were known to be um, at quite a high level, because a lot okay. of the times, you know, we make ourselves believe that it's a miracle or you'll, or, you know, you don't know how much truth there is or how mm. much, you know, um, extra people have added on and things yes, like that. So yes. when I was actually writing these miracles, I wanted to have them from people who were considered as, you know, um, quite high in their knowledge yeah, and would not yeah. just take things lightly. Yeah. Um, 
So there was this one one miracle which happened, which was really, really beautiful. And, and it shows that you don't have to be really high in knowledge, mm. but you just have to be very pious and very sincere. So this was um, a man whose name was uh, Mirza Asadullah, mm. um, who was um, a guard. He used to um, guard the shrine of Lady Fatima Masuma. And um, he spent years doing this. Mm. And he was, a, he was known to be a very pious, very humble person. And he got gangrene. In his okay. in his foot, and he was told that that he would have to have it amputated. Yeah. Um, and he was very very upset about this because he would, could no longer then work or yeah, you know do yeah, much. Course, or, yeah. um, so he decided to spend the night at Lady Fatima Masuma. Um, and as we know, they they shut the harem mm. after a certain time. But because he was a guard, he was allowed to stay. So he stayed there the whole night praying to her. And um, you know he actually um, complained to her, and you know he was asking her to take care of him and, and, and sort his illness out and everything. And then in the morning when they came and they opened up the, you know, the haram, the shrine, um, he actually, they heard him like, you know, sort of screaming and, and shouting and really, really happy. And um, he was standing there and he was totally, totally cured. And he actually said, um, and he actually, and this is in his own words, he says, a noble lady approached me and asked, what is it that you want? And I, I replied, cure me of this illness in my foot. Ask Allah for my cure or, or my death. Mm. Then that noble lady rubbed the corner of her scarf on my foot a few times and said, Allah has cured you. Immediately I felt better and the constant pain in my foot disappeared. I asked her who she was and she replied, How do you not recognize me while you are one of the guards of my shrine? I am Fatima, oh, the daughter of Masama ibn Jafar. So, you know, it really it, make, it's no, making it, my body tingle, you know, it's it's so, so beautiful yeah. that, you know, just like he was taking care of her shrine, she took, care, she of took him. care of him. So, yeah, it was really beautiful. And then we have, uh, you know, the other um, miracles which talk about how Mullah, uh, Mullah Sadra, how, um, again, uh, Ayatollah Marashi Najafi mm. would, you know, when they got stuck in, in um, trying to find an answer. To, to a specific um, problem, yeah. uh, specific philosophical problem, or you know, um, they would actually go to her shrine and, and ask her, and, and she would she give would, them the answer. Yeah. So yeah, and I think the, the, the this one's really beautiful. Um, there, there's um, this is where sh um, the late Grand Ayatollah said Shabab al Din mm -hmm. um, Marashi Najafi actually um, talks about it, and he says there was a time when he wanted to get his daughter married. Mm -hmm and he didn't have enough money to do so. So he went to the shrine of Lady Fatima Masuma and he says to her with tears in his eyes, um, he was actually quite stern about it and he said, oh my, Lord, oh my lady and mistress, why do you not care about my life? How can I get my daughter married with these empty hands? Yeah. And you know, he pleaded to her and he was very upset about it and he, and he went home. And when he went home, he dozed off and in his dream, he sees someone knocking at, at his door. And he opens it and there was a, a person who was standing there and um, he says to him that the lady is seeking you. So he quickly got up and he went to the shrine. This is all happening in his dream. Mm -hmm. He goes to the shrine and he enters the shrine and um, you know, he sees the women cleaning the shrine and everything and then he asks them what are they doing and he, and he says that the, you know, the lady is coming. And um, then she comes and he says that he, in his dream he sees her and he rem she reminds him very much of the likeness of Lady Fatima to Zahra al okay. because he's seen her in a dream as well. And he goes closer to her and he says, um, you know, he kisses her hand because obviously yeah. he's related yeah. to her. And he says, and she says to him, oh, oh, Shabab, when have we not thought of you that you now expect harshness from us and yeah. are complaining? You have been under our eyes since the time you have arrived in Qum and we have been granting you your desires. And so when he woke up from his sleep, he felt so bad uh, yeah. because he realized how impolite it had been. So he ran to the to the shrine to apologize to Lady yeah. Fatima Masum and ask for her forgiveness. But everything got sorted. Yes. You know, yes. that he's got money from God, he, yeah. you know, God knows where. And he, he managed to marry his daughter yeah. and, and yeah. everything, you know, was sorted. Um, so, you know, the little things little like that. Things, and and yeah. they're important. At that time, Definitely. that was very, very important to him to get his daughter yeah. married and things like that. So, you know being cured of illnesses, being, you know, um, given risk mm -hmm. um, and, and things like that. There, there's so many. I feel so like many. we could sit here all day, but, you know, sure. <laughs> I feel sad to say this to our viewers. And unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time today. And and like I said, speaking about her gives me goosebumps and we could sit here all day and speak about her. But thank you for shedding some light about her and, and why she has such a high status and why we use her as our intercession and why we should use her as our intercession and I hope she intercedes for all of us and inshallah she calls us for her ziyarat soon 
Um, and now we truly understand why she is the guardian of Qum. And let's try and use her, her the knowledge that we've learnt about her today to use her in our lives and try and better ourselves. And inshallah, viewers, join us another time for more, you know, more informative programs, inshallah, about Bibi Masum as well. Um, but that's all that we have time for today. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. السلام عليك يا بنت ولي الله السلام عليك يا أخت ولي الله السلام عليك يا عمة ولي الله السلام عليك يا بنت موسى بن جعفر ورحمة الله وبركاته